Welcome to the Elementor Pro. My name is Jared, and today we're going to talk about errors in Elementor. Elementor sometimes can error out, and the loading page or the editor screen uh, just won't load. Sometimes that happens. I don't have it happen very often, but there are issues that can cause it. And so, if you're coming across this video, it's likely because you were searching for a fix for this. And I hope that the items that I uh, suggest that you check into will fix these issues for you. So Elementor obviously is, uh, you know, a lot of code doing things in the background and it can conflict and cause issues with other things or other things can conflict and cause issues with Elementor. And so there are things to consider uh, and kind of a checklist that I go through when I run into issues and Elementor just doesn't seem to be loading for me. So the first thing that I do is check for plugin conflicts. Uh, when I go into my website, so I'm just gonna get to my dashboard here and, um, and look at my plugins, I can see that I have some plugin updates. And so I definitely wanna make sure that I have plugin updates ran. You can see here that uh, Elementor, uh, some of the add-ons that Elementor has, these aren't even active at the moment, um, have updates, but if they were active, maybe that could cause a problem. If perhaps your Elementor plugin is up to date, but your Elementor Pro plugin is not up to date, that could cause a problem. And so you definitely want to look at any opportunities for plugin conflicts. And the first thing to look for with the conflicts is whether or not those plugins are updated. And so I highly recommend making sure that your plugins are updated. And also you can check Elementor's website to see if there are any known issues that would cause problems with the Elementor uh, plugin itself. So I'm going and just making sure that all of my plugins here are up to date and I will often refresh the page just to make sure. Sometimes I'll even go to the dashboard and go to the updates page just to make sure that everything is up to date. Now in considering conflicts, if every all of your plugins are up to date and everything seems current and you still have an issue, perhaps one of the other plugins that your site is running is causing a problem. And so the best way to determine that is to deactivate your plugins and see if Elementor still fails to load. Now you don't necessarily have to deactivate all plugins and this kind of is a bummer to do if this is your live website, if this is your production website that is live disabling all of your plugins is going to make the functionality of your website uh, fail in different ways depending on the plugins that you're using. So I highly recommend thinking about doing this before you actually just go and do it. If it's a major problem then you just have to go and do it. Um, but you know that's that is what it is sometimes when you have an error. So go through and look at the plugins that you have and consider like well you know some of them like the uh, you know, the, the classic editor, the uh, Akizmet anti-spam, however you pronounce that, and some of the other plugins probably aren't going to be the cause of the conflict um, with Elementor. You know, maybe if one of these essential add-ons or exclusive add-ons, those types of plugins were outdated, maybe that would cause a problem. So you might consider deactivating those temporarily and then go back to Elementor and see if it, it loads for you. Um, Tools like Jetpack, if you're using something like Jetpack or a caching plugin like WP Rocket or one of the other caching plugins, sometimes temporarily deactivating those and then going and trying to load Elementor and seeing if it loads then might, uh, might lead you to find the problem there. A lot of times with plugins like Jetpack, WP Rocket, WP Super Cache, all of those, they are compressing files and they're doing different things with different files in the background, which usually only affects the people viewing your website, not the back end. But sometimes things can get clogged up there. And so if you are using a caching plugin, go and dump the cache, especially if you have some caching plugins have features to cache the back end of the website, which I don't recommend uh, on your admin side. So sometimes disabling those plugins it won't allow those cache files to be used. It reverts WordPress back to loading things the way that WordPress would naturally, which should allow Elementor to load naturally also. So consider that uh, plugin conflicts and you can usually, um, you can usually 
determine if it's a plugin conflict by disabling a plugin and then going and testing Elementor. Uh, another thing that you might consider too is the browser that you're using. I would definitely try changing between different browsers to see if the problem persists. I use a variation of Chrome uh, called Brave. It's more of a secure browser that has things that block uh, it has ad blocker built in and it has some security blocking stuff built in and so sometimes something like that can cause a problem and there's an option here for me to disable shields which essentially turns off all of those blockers so that I can make sure that my page is loading correctly and I usually do this on all the pages that I'm websites that I'm working on when using this particular browser. So if you're having an issue in Google Chrome, try Safari, try Edge browser on Windows, download Firefox and give that a try. Try a different browser and see if you can replicate the problem in a different browser. It could very well be your browser, some sort of a, um, a plugin that you're running on your browser or something like that that causes an issue. Maybe even your browser needs to be updated. So consider looking into that as well. Another issue that's pretty common is an unintentional redirect. If you're using a redirection plugin to redirect people from one page to another, sometimes a page being accidentally named the same as a redirection could cause a problem. Uh, it's common that people use redirection plugins because a page that you don't want to have there anymore at a certain URL or a certain web address you want to forward to another location, you know, you end up getting all these redirects built up over time and you forget that they're there. So sometimes you might just want to disable the redirection plugin altogether temporarily to see if uh, Elementor will load because maybe you do have an unintentional redirect in place. If you are a slightly more advanced user and you have used the .htaccess file to create your redirects, then I would also check the .htaccess file to make sure there aren't any redirects that are there. Some of the older plugins with WordPress used to actually just write the .htaccess file, and so you might even ask your web host, if you're not sure what an .htaccess file is, to go in and see if there are any redirects that could be causing any issues there. You might have to reach out to your hosting company to uh, make that happen. Another thing that you'll want to check is to make sure that your system resources with your hosting account can support Elementor. If we go into Elementor and then go down to System Tool, or System in Info, which is underneath Tools, um, you can see that it's telling us a little bit of information about the system in which our website is running on. Uh, so you can see here that I'm on a Linux-based system. I've got a uh, 200 megabyte uh, post size, so I can upload up to 200 megabyte images. As I scroll down, you can see my memory limit is 256 megabytes. This could be an issue here. If you have a lot of elements on your page and you know loading Elementor is a bit heavy because you've got a lot of animations and elements and all this stuff on your page and it seems like it's taking forever to load or it's crashing or something like that, you wanna make sure that your hosting memory, your PHP memory limit is at 256 megabytes or more. I would even recommend going to 512 if you have heavier pages and you're running into this problem often. Going up to 512 typically is gonna be fine for most hosting accounts and is not gonna be an issue. If you're on a cheap hosting plan, a budget type of hosting plan, they may not offer you the ability to change this, so you may need to have a better hosting plan uh, in order to uh, change this memory limit to something a bit higher. But the memory limit could be quite a bit uh, of the issue. You also wanna look at your PHP version, and your PHP version, which shows right here, um, mine is 7.3.29-1. Uh, uh, you definitely want to make sure that you're on a compatible version of PHP with Elementor. If a new version of Elementor comes out, a new version of WordPress even, and they're recommending you use a certain version of PHP, you may need to go to your host. So for example, if you're on like PHP version 5 dot something, that might be an issue that's causing Elementor not to work. And typically this would be uh, this would be happening 
because you updated Elementor to a new version and then all of a sudden it doesn't work. Typically, if your PHP version has remained consistent and your Elementor version has remained consistent, you're not gonna have any problems here. But if you update Elementor and then all of a sudden things aren't working, definitely check uh, your PHP version, check that memory, make sure that you have substantial memory and that your PHP version is compatible with Elementor. If things still fail to load, issues are still happening, you can go into the Elementor settings and go into advance and you can switch the editor load method from disable to enable. It says for troubleshooting server configuration conflicts and so typically this will help you identify if there's an issue with uh, your server configuration. Um, this may have to do with some software that's running on the server that is performing something else that is making JavaScript or something that Elementor needs not load at the appropriate time. And so this may help you troubleshoot. It's definitely something that you most likely would want to keep disabled. And I've never had this fix a problem for me, but it is a feature that Elementor has as a troubleshooting method uh, to look at if you're having issues. Now lastly, as a last ditch effort, and hopefully you have backups, you could roll back to a previous backup of your website. Now keep in mind that when you roll back to a previous backup, you're gonna lose anything that has been done to that website since that backup and the moment in which you're wanting to, uh, to perform that backup. So uh, if, you're, if you're like me, you have a backup solution in place to where your websites are getting backed up. Uh, periodically throughout the day and uh, an entire backup of that website being done every night so that if I need to roll back, I don't have to roll back that far and I'm likely not going to lose much. And this is super critical for websites that are e-commerce or that have some sort of data collection. Uh, you have new customers, new things happening within WordPress, and if you roll back, you're also going to be rolling back and losing all of that data. So before you roll back to a backup, you definitely want to make sure that you don't you know, lose anything that uh, has happened between that time. If you're thinking about backup solutions, there are a lot of different ways that you can back up your website. If you have a good hosting platform like Nexus, which is uh, the one that I prefer, Nexus has a backup solution built in, and so you have backups, you can easily roll back to a backup and, uh, and get access to that backup that may have been taken a few hours ago or maybe yesterday, um, depending on when the error started to happen with Elementor. So rolling back essentially would allow us to get to a point in which Elementor worked so that we can figure out what went wrong. Maybe it was a file we uploaded or a plugin that we uploaded and something is crashing. We can roll back to a previous version of our website and see what went wrong uh, or perhaps run updates that we forgot to update and now we're causing problems. This definitely is a last ditch effort and usually just Elementor not loading would not, would not cause me to do a rollback. If, L, if something was crashing the entire website and I couldn't access anything at all, I couldn't even get logged into the dashboard on the back end of WordPress, that's when I would probably go and roll back to a backup because something big happened that caused a big problem. But if Elementor is just failing to load, it's likely that anything that I've mentioned before this point in this video is going to fix the problem and you should be fine. Uh, obviously, if it's not and you're at this point and it still hasn't fixed the problem, that's when you definitely want to reach out to Elementor directly and say, hey, I've got an issue here. You're, of course, going to need to be an Elementor Pro subscriber in order for that. So you, you definitely want to sign up for Elementor and then contact them and say you have a problem if you're not already using Elementor Pro uh, as a subscriber through their website. I've got a link down in the description below so you can jump over and sign up for that if you need to. But that's going to do it for this video. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. We put out three videos a week on Elementor. We want to help you become an Elementor Pro as well. I have an Elementor course that's available. Learn everything that you need to know. It's down in the description, so make sure to check that out. That's going to do it for the video today. Thanks so much, and I hope to see you back in another one soon. Take care.